Well, God bless you, my beloved, and welcome once again to worship at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Why don't you tag a friend or a loved one on social media even now? Tell them that it's time to worship. Uh, why don't you start a watch party? Let's worship together the God of our salvation, the God who's been with us all week long. My mama used to say, through dangers seen and unseen, the Lord has been with us. God has been with us all week long, and now, as we get ready for a new week, what better way to begin than to begin in worship? We've been preaching through a series of sermons entitled Rooted, Keeping the Faith in a World in Flux. We offer today the last sermon in that four-part series. You don't want to miss it. God's got a blessing in store for you and your house. If you're blessed by today's worship, I trust and pray that you will contribute and support the ministry of Ebenezer Baptist Church. There are many ways to do that. You can go to our website, ebenezeratl.org, or you can download the church's app, or you can mail your tithes and offerings to the church, or you can text to give. I hope that you'll give prayerful consideration to joining the Ebenezer Baptist Church. No matter where you live in the world, you can be a part of this great fellowship of faith. Think about it, a church founded in 1886 that has long been at the cutting edge of human transformation, rooted in the foundation of faith. This is the spiritual home of Martin Luther King Jr. But even before that, the spiritual home of Martin Luther King Sr., who led a voting rights campaign in Atlanta in 1935. And before that, the spiritual home of Dr. King's maternal grandfather, A.D. Williams, who was a leader in the NAACP, fought and helped to create the first public high school for black children in Atlanta, Georgia. And we continue that legacy of ministry and activism in this moment. We've always seen that faith and the fight for freedom are inextricably connected. This is Black History Month. We are worshiping together here at the Ebenezer Baptist Church. Tell somebody it's time to worship. Come on church, let's give him praise today. We are to love you Jesus. We make your name loud among all that's called God. Let us declare the name
morning, on the behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Raphael G. Warnock, and our entire church family, we'd like to welcome you to the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, the spiritual home of Martin Luther King Sr. and the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We are proudly known as America's Freedom Church. Should you be interested to find out more about our ministry or like to join, we invite you to go to our website, www.ebenezeratl.org and hit the, the button to join here. We're so glad to have you. Bless you. Hello and welcome to News You Can Use at Ebenezer. This Wednesday, March 3rd, Navigating Our World is going live on Facebook at 6 p.m. for a special presentation from EBC's own Dr. Fleeta Mask Jackson. A scholar, educator, and activist, Dr. Mask Jackson will present her groundbreaking research on the ways in which racial injustice impacts pregnancy outcomes among African-American women. This event is the first in our Women's History Month series, and we hope you can join us for this important discussion. For more information about the series, it can be found on the EBC website under the Special Events tab. Ebenezer Small Groups meet weekly to discuss the week's sermon, pray together, and fellowship. We are excited to announce our new, always virtual small group that will launch in March. Whether you live in Atlanta, across the country, or around the world, you can join this small group. Sign up today on the EBC website under the Special Events tab. We are thrilled about the 2021 Women's Day season, and the theme for this year is staying at the feet of Jesus. Seek, surrender, shift. Join us on March 7th at 1 p.m. for the virtual Women's Ministry Day season kickoff. Details are on the website, under the special events tab, and in the Sunday newsletter. The Outreach Ministry and the Young Adult Ministry are teaming up with the Martin Luther King Senior Collaborative to distribute 10,000 pounds of groceries during March and April. Through the Man of Mondays program, we aim to feed our neighbors and nourish our community. Will you help us spread the word? Distribution dates and times are posted on the EBC website. Please take a moment to download the EBC app and check out the website, EbenezerATL.org, for information about upcoming events in the life of our church. And for even more information on everything Ebenezer, be sure to tune into our social media sites for all the latest updates. Black Luminaries. Honoring Black Luminaries who remain rooted, bore great fruit, and accomplished outstanding achievements during this season of uncertainty. Dr. Valerie Montgomery Rice, born 1961. Dr. Valerie Montgomery Rice is a proud Georgian who received a bachelor's degree in chemistry from the Georgia Institute of Technology. In 1987, she graduated from Harvard Medical School with a medical degree. Dr. Montgomery Rice served as a professor and chair of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. And then the Dean and Senior Vice President at Meharry Medical College. In 2014, she became the first woman president of the Morehouse School of Medicine. Dr. Montgomery Rice is an active member of the Ebenezer Baptist Church. As a trustee, she's the lead medical voice on the church's COVID-19 transition team. Dr. Kismikia Corbett, born 1986. Dr. Kismikia Shanta Corbett was born in Hurdle Mills, North Carolina and graduated from the University of Maryland, Baltimore County in 2008 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Biological Sciences and Sociology. In 2014, she received a PhD in Microbiology and Immunology from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Dr. Corbett is a viral immunologist at the Vaccine Research Center and made headlines in 2020 by being the scientific lead for their coronavirus team. Her research focuses on developing novel vaccines for syndromes such as SARS and MERS. Naomi Osaka, born 1997. Born in Japan to a Haitian father and Japanese mother, Naomi Osaka moved to Valley Stream, New York, on Long Island at the age of three. She took an early interest in tennis and began to receive national attention when, at the age of 16, she defeated Samantha Stoser, a former U.S. Open champion. 
She reached phenom status when she defeated Serena Williams in 2018 in the final of the US Open, becoming the first Japanese player to win a Grand Slam singles title. Known for her aggressive playing style, she was named one of the 2020 Sports Illustrated Sportspersons of the Year, and she was included on the Time 100 list in both 2019 and 2020. In 2020, Osaka used her international platform to bring attention to the Black Lives Matter movement by initially withdrawing from the Cincinnati Open to raise awareness for the killing of George Floyd in the police shooting of Jacob Blake. Black Luminaries Dr. Ibram X. Kendi was born in the Jamaica Queens neighborhood of New York City. He later moved to Manassas, Virginia and graduated from Stonewall Jackson High School in 2000 after receiving two Bachelor of Science degrees in African American Studies and magazine production from Florida A&M University. Kendi earned a Master of Arts and Doctor of Philosophy in African American Studies from Temple University. A published author and scholar, he is often a guest on national news programs discussing race relations and promoting several books he has authored, the most famous being How to Be an Anti-Racist. Keisha Lance Bottoms, born 1970. Keisha Lance Bottoms was born in Atlanta, Georgia. She graduated from Frederick Douglass High School and earned a bachelor's degree in communications from Florida A&M University. In 1994, she earned a Juris Doctor degree from Georgia State University. Before becoming a politician, she was a prosecutor and represented children in juvenile court. For eight years, she served on the Atlanta City Council before becoming the 60th mayor. She is the sixth African American and the second African American woman to serve in this capacity. She served as a co-chair of the Democratic National Convention and was reportedly on the list of possible candidates for Vice President of the United States in 2020. In say who fought? Itse Ufat was born in the African country of Nigeria and raised in Southwest Atlanta. She earned a Bachelor of Science degree from Georgia Institute of Technology and a Juris Doctor degree from the University of Dayton. Itse worked as the Assistant Executive Director of the Canadian Association of University Teachers. And she also served as the Senior Lobbyist and Government Relations Officer for the American Association of University Professors. Most recently, she is the Chief Executive Officer of the New Georgia Project and the New Georgia Project Action Fund. Her emphasis on developing Georgia's homegrown talent by training and organizing local activists across the state. Through her leadership, the New Georgia Project has registered almost 425,000 Georgians to vote. Her efforts merge civil rights with civic technology. She has appeared on MSNBC, Salon, and The Root, and she has been featured as a panelist for several national conferences. Stacey Abrams, born 1973. Born in Madison, Wisconsin, and raised in Gulfport, Mississippi, Stacey Abrams later moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and graduated as valedictorian from Avondale High School. In 1995, she received a Bachelor of Arts degree from Spelman College. She was a Mary S. Truman Scholar, and she earned a Master of Public Affairs from the University of Texas at Austin in 1998. The next year, she earned a Juris Doctor from Yale Law School. For several years, she worked as a tax attorney. Subsequently, she became a Deputy City Attorney for Atlanta, and then a member of the Georgia General Assembly in 2010. In 2018, she mounted a large campaign for the Governor of Georgia. Her work during and after her bid brought to light issues of voter suppression and disenfranchisement across the state. As a result, she founded Fair Fight Action and Fair Count. Recently, she was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for her outstanding efforts in increasing voter turnout in the U.S. elections. The Reverend Dr. Raphael G. Warnock, born 1969. Raphael Gamaliel Warnock was born in Savannah, Georgia in 1969 to Jonathan and Berlin Warnock, both Pentecostal pastors. He grew up in public housing and graduated from Seoul C. Johnson High School in 1987. He received a Bachelor of Arts degree from Morehouse College in 1991 and a Master of Divinity, a Master of Philosophy, and a Doctor of Philosophy from Union Theological Seminary in New York. Before settling down in Atlanta, he served as the youth pastor and then the assistant pastor of the Abyssinian Baptist Church. He served as the senior pastor of Douglas Memorial Community Church in Baltimore, Maryland, before becoming the fifth and youngest senior pastor of the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church. His civic leadership has centered on ending mass incarceration, providing affordable health care, establishing a living wage, addressing climate change, and fighting voter suppression by registering underserved populations 
and challenging unfair policies. On January 20th, 2021, Pastor Warnock became the junior United States Senator from the great state of Georgia. He is the first African American to represent Georgia in this office and continues to serve as our beloved senior pastor. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 to 8. Black Luminary. Black, 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 black. Black Luminaries. Come on! <laughs> Good morning, Ebenezer Baptist Church family and friends. Right now, it is prayer time in the life of the church. And we as a church would like to pray for Brother Curtis Dorsey, who just lost his mother. And we would also like to pray for Sister Vera Robinson, who is requesting special prayer from her church family. And we want to pray for those who are sick and shut in and those who may be experiencing grief in this season. No matter where you are and no matter who you are, we would like to pray for you. So make sure that you type your prayer request in the chat as we go to God together in prayer. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and heavenly Father, we come to you right now with heavy burdens on our hearts, Lord God, and prayer requests that are hidden in our being, Lord. Father God, we need you to show yourself and we need you to show up and show out in our lives and in the lives of those around us. God, for those who are experiencing loneliness in this season, Father, we ask and we pray that you would remind them that your presence is always with them, God. For those who are experiencing grief, Lord, remind them that your arms are wide enough to hold them and hold their grief and sorrow and their pain Lord God in their tears and Father God for those who may be experiencing illness right now Lord we believe you to be a healer and so God we need you to do what only you can do Father God, we need you to show up in ways that we may not even know that we need you to show up in our lives. God, we ask and pray that you would have your will be done on a daily basis as we continue to work from home, some of us, and for those who may be working uh, on location and for those who may be teaching on location, Lord, we ask and pray for your protection over them. God, for our children who are in school, right now. We ask and pray that you would be with them and that you would provide a hedge of protection between them and any illness that they can catch. Lord God, we need you even now. We need you to continue to speak. We need you to continue to walk. We need you to continue to talk with us, Lord God, in this season and to move us in the direction that you would have for us to go. And Lord God, when all is said and done, Lord God, when everything is finished, let us be the first to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise because you are mighty and you are matchless and you are who you are. You are the great I am. And for that, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful for you, for your mercy and for your goodness. And that is in Jesus Christ's holy and matchless name that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.
sang my name. Ooh, I, I know I've been changed. Ooh, I know I've been changed. Ooh, I know I've been changed. Cause the angels in heaven don't sign my name. I stopped. In the water, and the water was cold. The angels in heaven don't sign my name. He chilled my body, but not my soul. The angels in heaven don't sign my name. Who Don't sign my name If you don't believe That I have been redeemed The angels in heaven Don't sign my name Just follow me down To the Jordan stream The angels in heaven Don't sign my name Who Don't sign my name. God bless you, my beloved. We have been in a series of sermons these last few weeks entitled Rooted, Keeping the Faith in a world in flux, rooted, keeping the faith in a world in flux. And as we bring this series of sermons to a close, I want to turn your attention to the Old Testament book of Job. The 14th chapter, the reading begins with the 7th verse. Job chapter 14, verses 7 through 9, and then verse 14. For there is hope. For a tree. If it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its shoots will not cease. Though its roots grow old in the earth, and its stump dies in the ground, yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant. Verse 14, if mortals die, will they live again? Job says there is hope for a tree. Though its roots grow old in the earth and its stump dies in the ground, yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant. I want to talk today about the testimony of a tree. The testimony of a tree. I see Job, a man beset by suffering, sorrow, and sickness, try as best he can to push his way through the foggy maze 
called life. I see Job trying as hard as he can to push his way through. Sometimes it's hard just to get out of the bed. Sometimes it's difficult just to make your way through, just to push your way through. Sometimes it's hard just to see your way through, to remain rooted given the challenges of one's reality, to keep your wits about you, to remain sane while suffering and sorrow and sickness are all around. Sometimes, if we're honest, sometimes life is just difficult. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. I came today to preach to honest people. Sometimes life is just difficult. It gets difficult to get through the dark gloom of night while letting your light shine and not allowing the gloom on the outside to get on the inside. Sometimes it's, it's, it's tough just to make it through the darkness and not allow the darkness on the outside to create darkness on the inside. How in the world do I remain rooted when there's suffering all around me? How do I remain rooted in a crazy and chaotic world? How do I keep the faith in a world in flux? Well, can you see Job? brother acquainted with sorrows, Job, that original blues man of the Bible. I think of Job when I hear the blues singer say, I've been down so long, getting up ain't even crossed my mind. I, I, I think of Job when I hear the folk saying that comes out of black history, I've been to sorrow's kitchen and I licked the pots clean. I know all about suffering. I know all about being at the bottom of the barrel. Job, like you and me, is trying to see his way through. There come days that are high when we're at the top of our game. Thank God for those days, but, but there come days when we're at the mountain high, but then there come days when we are at the valley low. And the question is, how do you keep the faith when you're in the low part of life, when you're in the difficult part of life. There is Job beset by suffering and sorrow and sickness. And what I like about Job is he never loses hope. Some have called Job the paragon of patience in the Bible. I'm not so sure about that. When I read Job, I see a man wrestling with God. I see a man arguing with God. Thou art a God, he said, who hides thyself. Show yourself so that we can argue it out. He, he struggles with God. He struggles with his faith. He protests. But what I do like about Job is he never loses hope. Matter of fact, the Hebrew word we translate hope appears 11 other times. In addition to this chapter, the word hope appears 11 other times in this of all books. Hope appears in the book of Job more than any other book in the Bible. Imagine that. Job who lost all of his children, all of his sons, all of his daughters. Job who lost all of his cattle, Job, who lost all of, his, all of his wealth, Job, who was stripped even of his health. God knows if you got a little bit, you don't want to lose your wealth, but whatever you lose, you don't want to lose your health. Job lost all of it, and yet 11 other times, in addition to this time, we find the word hope in the Bible. Irony of ironies. The book of Job is literally the most hope-filled book in the Bible. Maybe that's what Paul meant when he said suffering produces endurance. Endurance character. 
and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Hope does not disappoint. God shows up. God walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death. God promised never to leave us or forsake us. Whatever you do, my beloved, don't give up. Job never loses hope. Hold on to hope. He never loses hope in spite of all that he lost. Not only did he lose his friends, not only did he lose his property, but he had a bunch of friends around him who are around him, but they're not much help. They show up and they see Job on his sick bed and the Bible says that they just sat there day after day after day after day and they didn't say a mumbling word. They just looked at Job, man, you're in bad shape there, countenance seemed to say, but they didn't even say a word and then when they finally opened up their mouths, the Bible says that their mouths were filled with arguments. These so-called friends, Eliphaz and Bildad and Zophar, armchair philosophers exercising their privilege to wax poetic about Job while Job writhes in pain. They are engaged in theological and philosophical arguments about the nature of suffering in the world. It's easy for some folk to theorize about suffering in general while you're dealing with your suffering in particular. They are no help. They have a whole lot of arguments but no answers. I wonder if there's anybody who's got some friends like that. You know, folk you know who have a lot of arguments, but no answers. Is there anybody other than me who, when you found yourself in a difficult situation, you picked up the phone and called somebody, and when you finished talking to them, <laughs> you felt worse than you did before you talked to them? You said to yourself, man, I would have been better off talking to myself. I would have been better off talking to a tree. And that's what Job does in a manner of speaking. Sometime after his friends stopped talking, I see Job a man beset with suffering, sorrow, and sickness. Strike up a conversation with a tree. And I lay it before you this morning. He lost everything. But in a moment, both painful and prayerful, his eyes survey the vast wreckage that is now his lot and his life until they fix their gaze upon a most unusual conversation partner whose limbs stretched out seem to beckon him. Come now, sit under uh, the shade of my branches and, and let me talk to you for a little while. Son, I hear Job say, there is hope for a tree. A burst of spiritual genius. There is hope for a tree, a glimmer of hope while gazing at an inanimate object, uh, there is hope for a tree. I see Job, but I hear the poet, Joyce Kilmer, who said, I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree, a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast, a tree that looks at God all day, lifts her leafy arms to pray a tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair upon whose bosom snow is lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. And I drop by this day to say to you that in addition to our theology, maybe we need some treeology. I hear somebody say, Reverend, where, where does the Bible say that? Well, the Bible says in Psalm 1 that the righteous are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither in all that they do. They 
prosper. The righteous, Psalm says, will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. In fact, in better days, Job says in chapter 29, verse 19, that, that when I was at the top of my game, when all was going well with me, this is how he describes it. He says, my roots spread out to the waters with the dew all night on my branches. My glory was fresh with me. I, I, I was in my glory. I was at the top of my game. When I walked into the town square, everybody hushed their mouth and they said, Mr. Job is passing by. When I showed up in the town square, when I showed up in the circles, everybody knew my name. Everybody said, there is Mr. Somebody. Job is all right. I was at the top of my game and my glory was fresh with me. And, and in those days, he says, my roots spread out to the waters. And I think that that's why Job is still standing even in the midst of his suffering. He's still standing not because his glory is fresh. He's already passed that chapter of his life. His glory is not fresh. That's, that's not why he's still standing. He's still standing because his roots were spread out to the water. And I, I think that that's a good lesson for anybody this morning. You ought to listen to the testimony of a tree. A tree stands because its roots are planted next to a river. Beloved, you ought not wait until suffering comes to you for you to come to God. You ought to come to God before suffering comes to you. You ought to plant yourself next to a river whose waters never run dry. That way when trouble and transition come, you will stand. When trials come, you will stand. When the winds blow, you will stand. When friends turn their back on you, you will stand. But only if you are planted with roots that go deep down in the soil of God's rocky and strong foundation. Roots by a river. Job says that everybody was looking at my branches. Everybody saw the dew on my branches. The sunlight shining on my face and they thought that that's what my life was all about. No, my life was about the stuff you can't see. It was about the roots that go deep down in the ground. Human beings look on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. We're looking on the outside. God looks on the inside. Something within me that holdeth the ring. The roots went deep down in the ground. Planted with roots by a river. And then Job says an amazing thing, and I lay it at your feet this morning. Transfixed by a tree. He says this, though its roots grow old in the earth, and its stump dies in the ground, yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth branches, hallelujah, like a young plant. That's good news. That's good news for every child of God. Trees can come back. Even when the branches are broken, if the roots are intact. Or oh, some folk don't know where to shout. You just missed your shout. Trees can come back. Even when the branches are broken, if the roots are intact. That's all right. Folk used to say stuff to me three times. Let me run it back by you. Trees can come back even when the branches are broken, if the roots are intact. Matter of fact, 
Uh, you don't have to be a tree expert to know that every now and then the best thing you can do for a tree is to prune some of its branches. Some of you are, are busy crying and writhing over what you've lost. Some of those branches needed to be cut off in the first place. You needed to prune that tree so that the tree could continue to live. Don't worry about losing this branch or losing that branch. Sometimes you need to get rid of some things. Some Sometimes you need to get rid of some situations. Sometimes you need to get rid of some people, but make sure that your roots are intact. Whatever you do, make sure that that which is vital and essential and foundational is intact. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all of these other things will be added unto you. Make sure your roots are in track, are intact. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding, but in all of thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Make sure your roots are intact. All of the days of my life, I will trust in the Lord. Make sure your roots are intact. This one thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Make sure your roots are intact, for in the time of storm, he will hide me. He will hide me under the feather of his wings. I'm trusting and I'm looking and I've got my eyes lifted to the hills from whence coming my help. My help comes from the Lord. My roots are intact. You need to remain rooted through prayer, through regular worship, through Bible study, through fellowship, through tithing because the discipline of tithing teaches you how to trust in God. You need to remain rooted by connecting to other folk who are also rooted. Make sure that your house is built on a strong foundation. And here it is, Job says, now life has its challenges. That's what I like about the book of Job. No cotton candy faith. He is the real thing. He says, though its roots grow old in the earth and its stump dies. Now that's where faith matters. What if you do, what do you do if you trust in the Lord and you still lose it all? Hmm? What do you do if you love the Lord and you lose it all, what do you do if you trust God and you still go through trials and tribulations? What do you do if you've been seeking his face and yet you are beset by sorrow and suffering? What, what do you do when death comes and when sickness comes and when trials come? What, what do you do when, when folk turn their back on you? What do you do when, when the marriage doesn't work out and the family falls apart? What do you do when your career seems to be in, in a terrible tailspin and you can't get it together? What do you do when you're going through a pandemic and it begins to wear on your mind and your heart and depression begins to wear you down? The roots grow old in the earth and the stump seems to die. Here it is. Job says that, that even though the roots grow old in the earth and even though its stump dies in the ground, Job says, yet at the scent of water, 
it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant at the scent of water. Have mercy. That's, that's a good place to shout on a Sunday morning. Job says all you need is the scent of water. You don't need a whole lot of water, just the scent of water, not even the sight of water, but the scent of water. No need for torrential rains, just the scent of water. I don't need a flood, I just need the scent of water. I just need living water. I need life-giving water. I need everlasting water. I need the water that Jesus talked about when he met a woman standing beside a well and he said that if you drink of that water, you'll thirst again. But if you drink of the water that I provide, you'll never thirst again. God, I just need the scent of water, just a little bit of water and life can spring anew. Well, my beloved, we've been going through a dry and difficult season. and We've seen so much death. We've seen so much disappointment. We've seen so much devastation. 500,000 souls just here in the United States of America alone, people have died. Huge segments of the economy have been dying. And the trauma of it all brings about his own emotional and spiritual death. Death in the earth, the stump dies in the ground. Job says, yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant. I just want to talk to somebody who feels like your situation is dead and in the ground. I want you to hear this day the testimony of a tree. If you don't want to listen to the preacher, that's all right. If the song doesn't move you, that's all right. I wish you would just hear the testimony of a tree. If I could bring brother tree here, if I could bring sister tree and stand them up in this sanctuary, he would testify, she would testify, and here's what Brother Tree would say, here's what Sister Tree would say. They would say, folk had counted me out. I had been dead so long that folk had forgotten that I was even there. My roots were in the ground, but they had been dead and dry for a long time, and it seemed like there would never be any more life in me. But one day, I smelled the scent of water, and when I smelled the scent of water. I didn't see the water, but I smelled the scent of a water that seemed familiar. I remembered that sensation before. It was something that had brought life to me before, and all I had to do was send my roots down a little bit further, and before I knew it, I felt a tingling in my roots. It was the scent of water. I couldn't get a whole lot, but I just got what I could. I just grabbed hold of what I could get. Sometimes you can't get all the resources you want, but you ought to just grab hold of what you can. You ought to call on whoever you can call on. Find whoever will pray for you. All I need is a scent of water. I don't need the torrential rain. I don't need everybody to believe. I just need two or three witnesses. I just need one praying partner. I just need one word from the Lord and that one word from the Lord will give me encouragement and hope and salvation and redemption and it'll take me not only through the week but all the days of my Lord. I just need a scent of water. I, I just need a glimpse of your face. I, I, I had been dead. The stump was dead in the ground. But if the tree could testify it would tell you that if your situation appears hopeless and dead in the ground, here's the thing, there is some water in the same ground. The ground where they buried you, 
the ground where you seem to be dying and you'll never come back to life because there's dirt all around you and folk keep kicking dirt on you. Here's the thing, in that same place there is water, there's water in the same ground. Isn't that what Black History Month is all about? They buried us because they didn't know that we were seeds and it's a dangerous thing to bury some seeds because seeds have a way of sending their roots down in the ground. They don't need a whole lot of water. All they need is the scent of water. All they need is a little bit of hope. All they need is some segregated schools and and you can call them three-fifths of a human being and you can rob them of the basic necessities of life and they'll take scraps and make soul food. They'll take a distorted theology where it says slaves obey your masters and they'll find where it says that God said to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. You can give them the blues and they'll make music if you bury seeds. They'll feel a tingling inside of them and all of a sudden they'll start to grow roots and before you know it they'll begin to bud into flowers. What the adversary used to destroy you, God will strengthen you and lift you and save you and raise you and redeem you and vindicate you and renew your life. I better get out of here but I just want you to know that you don't need a whole lot of water. You don't need a whole lot of prayer. You don't need a whole lot of testifying. You don't need a whole lot of preaching. Every now and then all you need is a word from the Lord that came by to tell you that you shall live and not die. 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 Not only shall you live again, you'll love again. You will learn again. You will thrive again. You will prosper again. You shall walk again. You shall run again. You shall rise again. You shall shout hallelujah again. You may feel like you're dead in the ground, but there's water in the same Ground, Lord, I hear of showers of blessings. Thou art scattering, full and free. Showers, the thirsty soul refreshing. Lord, let some drops fall on me. Somebody ought to say this morning, even me, Lord. Even me. Let some drops now fall. Somebody else ought to say, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Sinful though my heart may be, I am longing for your favor. Whilst thou art blessing, O Lord, come by and bless me. Even me, O Lord, even me, Lord, let some drops. cry out to God. If you're not a member of a church, I want to encourage you to go to that place on our website where it says, I want to join. Send your roots out to a place where there is living water so that you might live again. You can live again. You can love again. You can learn again. You can rise again, my beloved. Lord, let some drops fall on me. I want to invite you to join this church. I want to invite you to give your life over to God through Christ. I want to invite you to support the ministry of the church. 
tithes and offerings, you can go to our website, EbenezerATL.org. You can download the church app. You can mail your tithes and offerings to the church. You can text to give. All of these ways in which we reach out to God. Come on, save me. <laughs>